Okay, so I thought we'd take a look at an application of using parabolas sort of in nature and in the real world. So you can imagine if you ever see one of these bridges that actually sort of built on underneath, sometimes the curve of that bridge actually, for stress reasons, is in a shape that's sort of parabolic. It looks like a parabola. And in fact, here's an example of such a bridge. You can see here's the bridge going over there. And then this curve here is essentially a parabola. And so now, suppose we're given the following information, so let's take a look at this together. So suppose that you, you're told that, in fact, the height of this arch of the bridge is given by the function, I can put it here, h of x equals minus 3 over 64 x squared plus 27, where what's x? x just represents the distance from the very center of the bridge out in this way, in this way. And of course, we understand that this would be negative distance then if you go to the left and distance here to the right. So in fact, if you look at the graph of that parabola, you can see it's a sad face parabola, so that's good. In fact, it should be this parabola right here. Well, if you put the axes there, it would look something like this. So this is the exact same picture, but now just with the axes in place. And so x just represents the distance away from the very center here. And we could ask uh, uh, some interesting questions, or maybe some not so interesting questions, depending upon your own individual point of view and taste. However, what we can ask are the following. For example, what is the maximum height of this arch? So how high is that arch? Well, let's, let's take that question first and see if we can think about it. All right, well, that height, that maximum value, of course, is going to appear and going to happen at the vertex. So all I have to do is find the vertex. Well, what's the vertex? Well, in fact, watch this, folks. I'm going to do this for you without writing anything down. So I'll always keep my hands above the board here. Okay. How am I going to find the vertex? Let's think about it. It's negative b over 2a. But what's b? Well, b is the coefficient on the x term. Now look down here, and let's take a look. Notice there is no x term here. So that means the coefficient must have been 0. So I have 0 divided by 2a, which is some number. But 0 divided by anything is 0. So in fact, the x value where the vertex is located is going to be x equals 0. And that makes sense, because you can see the arch is sort of symmetric right around the y-axis. So if I let x be 0, I see 27. So in fact, the height at the maximum value, maximum height must be 27 feet. And if you look at this graph, I don't know if you can see it or not, but in fact, it's really drawn sort of to scale. This is 20 feet. This is 30 feet. This is 25 feet. And you can see this is a little bit above 25, so 27 is actually a reasonable thing. And in fact, it's the correct thing. So we were able to answer that question without doing any writing at all. That's pretty cool. And all I did was find the vertex, and this vertex was easy because since there was no x term, we knew that the axis of symmetry is the, is the y-axis. Let x be 0. There's the maximum height. Great. OK, now let's take a look at another question we can ask. For example, we could say, what is the height of the arch 10 feet to the right of the center? So 10 feet to the right of the center. Now watch this here, 10 feet over. I want to know how high is that right to here. So what's that height? It should, of course, be less than 27 that we just found. But how much less? If you look at this picture, what does it look like? If you look at this picture, it looks like it should be just around, it looks to me like it should be just a little bit more than 20. A little bit more than 20. But I want to find it exactly. So how would I do that? Well, what I want to do is just find the height when x equals 10. So all I have to do is evaluate this at 10. So that's not a big deal at all. All I'm going to do is take a look at h of 10. Right? Because I want to find out what the height is at a particular x value. So what is that? That's minus 3 over 64 times, well, 10 squared. So that's 100. And then plus 27. So now my job is to carefully work that out. You could do some canceling here. You can get rid of some 2s and so forth. And I think this will shrink down to something like uh, minus 75 over 16 plus and then if you get a common denominator here, I think you'd have to add on another 432 over 16. I just got a common denominator. That's just the same thing as saying 27. And if you combine these things, I think you see 357 all divided by 16. And what does that equal numerically? It's about 22.312 feet. So just a little bit over 22 feet. And in fact, that's what we were sort of saying. It looks like it was a little bit more than 20 feet. So in fact, it's actually 22.312 feet. Great. So to find the height at any particular value, I just plug into the function. Now, to show you sort of a different type of question, let's take a look at this. Now we're asked, how far from the center is the arch 8 feet tall? 
That's a different kind of question. What I want to know now is how far do I have to go off the center so that this distance is 8 feet? Well, if you look at it visually, it seems like, well, this is 10 feet. 8 feet will probably be around here. So what will that value be? It looks like it's going to be right around 20 feet. Now, how am I going to find that? That's a different type of problem. Here, I know the height, and I want to find sort of this value here. So how do I do that? Well, I set the height, I set the height equal to 8 feet and find out what value of x makes that height come true. So what I have to do now is set the height to 8 feet. Let's try that. So if I say h of x equals 8, then if I set the equation equal to 8, what do I see here? I see minus 3 over 64 x squared plus 27 and that equals 8. Now I'm going to solve that equation. So I bring the 27 over to this side, and if I subtract it, I'd see a minus 19. So what I see is minus 3 over 64 x squared equals minus 19. And if I now multiply everything through by negative 64 over 3, then notice this will cancel away, and I'll have 60, negative 64 over 3, and so I'll see that x equals, x squared rather, equals 1,216, all divided by 3. It becomes positive because a negative times a negative will be positive. And I have 64 times 19, which is 1,216. And then I just have a 3 downstairs. And now I take square roots of both sides. But remember, plus or minus square root, if you're going to take a square root. And so if we take the square root of both sides, let me bring down the action right to here, if you'll allow me. I'll see x equals plus or minus the square root of that thing, 1,216 over 3. And where's the plus or minus coming from? Does that make sense? It sure does, because notice that if I say to you 8 feet above the bridge, notice there's two places where that happens, some value and negative some value. So in fact, we're finding both of them. And let's see what that number is. That answer equals plus or minus, and if you compute this, you'll see 20 0.13 something feet. So it's around 20 some odd feet. Does that look good? It sure does, because look, if this is 8, if you go over here, it does look like it should be right around 20. So this picture looks pretty accurate, and the answer is either plus 20 some odd feet or minus the same thing, 20 some odd feet. Anyway, there's a, a great opportunity to see in action the idea of evaluating a parabola at a certain point and seeing how high it is versus finding where the parabola takes on a particular height. If you want to find out where the parabola takes on a height, you set the parabola equal, set the equation equal to that height, and you solve for x and find out where it happens. Or if you want to find out how high something is at a point, you then plug that point in for x and solve. Two different types of uses of the quadratic and looking at a parabola.